Hey everyone, this is Mary Beth McGandrews from Dread Central, and I'm here today with Spider One, director of Barry the Bride, and Chrissy Fox, star and writer of Barry, or co-writer of Barry the Bride. Hello, how are you? <laughs> yes, hello, hi, how are you? Hello, I'm so good. Congratulations on your, your new film. It has not been very long since Allegoria came out. What is it, how does it feel like to have these films back to back and just going and creating? <laughs> it must be yeah, kind of tiring. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's exhausting. It seems like that's our, that's exactly what we, we're on this weird one year schedule for, and we're starting another movie in June, which we'll get to. Oh, in <laughs> um, yeah, it's just nonstop, but you know, it's kind of like, I, we, we were talking about this and how it's when we see people make a movie and then they don't make a movie for another six years. I find that to be like, how do you do that? Like, how do you not, you get the bug. It's like getting a tattoo, you know, get one tattoo <laughs> suddenly you're just like covered in tattoos yeah. right? Because oh, yeah. I want to get another one and that's yeah. what making films is like for us and I think there's this yeah you just get this bug and you can't wait to you know and you oh I want to do it better than the last one oh I, 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 I fucked that up let me you know and whatever you just have this urge to to keep going and so that's what we've been doing it'll put me in an early grave but that's what we've been doing you know? yeah if our daughter doesn't, yeah. this will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so like, so what was the collaboration process like for writing this one? Like who had, was there one, did one of you have the initial idea first and kind of go for it? How did the Bury the Bride kind of come to be? Yeah, I mean, it, it was sort of a weird process because we were working on other things, right? So we, yeah. we were kind of moving stuff. And then I was in the shower one day and I had this like seed of an idea about a bachelorette party and like having this, you know, they're in a remote place and it's all takes place in one location and this the same like this large ensemble cast. And I was like, this is a cool idea. And then, you know, the husband and then so it was a really rough idea. And I kind of got out of the shower, told Spider about it. And I was like, you know, we should write this together. And and then, you know, this will be something like we could do maybe simply between projects and, and quickly and we could you know, do an extra movie this year and uh, <laughs> just an extra her. movie just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The side movie. So that that was my pitch initially. And then we started fleshing out the actual storyline and, you know, how people were going to die and obviously the twist that happens in it. And uh, and then it, it very much was not a simple movie and it was not a filler movie. It became the movie and it took over our lives for a year. Um, but I'm very glad it did. But it was it was an insane shoot and an insane process. Um, really good, but also like everything that could possibly be against you on a location was you know we're in the middle of the desert night shoots horrible oh, weather yeah. like oh really like, oh god it was like sweltering in the day and then so windy and so freezing at night and so yeah it, and then you know we had rattlesnake encounters we had crazy desert spider encounters and yeah it, it, it was really nuts and we were all yeah. actually crazy by the end of the film so it was a very authentic performance by everybody yeah, I mean, everyone went a little bit mad yeah. during the shoot because we also shoot in an incredibly fast uh manner we don't give ourselves a lot of days and so it became uh, yeah it was daunting for sure i mean it's a miracle yeah. that we, we finished this thing you know really <laughs> we're still together so it's hey. funny you don't see it on screen as much you know you don't you know, the, the, it really was like, there were days where we couldn't shoot what we were going to shoot because the, you know, we had 50 mile an hour wind gusts and oh my God. Know, and tornadoes. And so we would constantly be rethinking every day. We thought this was the plan and you get there and you'd have to re just retool everything. Um, so that became stressful as well. But, um, but at the end of the day, it was, you know, the cast was so strong and, and so willing to do whatever it took to get this thing done that it was it was all worth it. It was amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I am curious, Spider, then, what did you, what was kind of, like, what was, what was, like, the number one thing you learned from making your first film that you kind of put into practice or kind of kept in mind with Barry the Bride? I mean, I think the thing that, you, that uh, I, I don't know if I learned it, but I, what I, what I continue to realize is the most important thing about making a film is to have like a you know have a singular vision of how what this thing needs to feel like and a lot of times you can get in your own head or, or opinions of others may influence you and i think that you always have to keep going back to 
you know, Allegoria was a very, very unique beast on its own. It was, it, it was very much its thing and bury the bride is very much its thing. Yeah. And, um, just, you know, just, uh, you know, in, in more in a practical sense and less of a, you know, aesthetic sense is just preparation because like I said, we don't, mm -hmm. we don't allow ourselves, you know, very long film shoots. So the real work is before you shoot to be prepared to understand yeah. when you're on set and someone asks you a question, you have an answer. And if something, you know, like, with Barry the Bride every day there was a new twist coming that you were able to be flexible and think quickly and in and, and and change your your plan um so to be a, yeah. to be mentally available to do that kind of stuff is really important when you make a movie yeah yeah I can't imagine <laughs> but then with what I really love about this movie especially is like the sisterhood aspect not just like blood sisters but this kind of the the you know group of of, of girlfriends and obviously you have like the stereotypes but I think you go deeper into these relationships between women and, and I absolutely love that especially in a movie like this and I just wanted to hear about developing those those characters and those relationships and really giving like a very femme feel to a hillbilly horror movie but still like, have like this very kind of like feminine energy to it yeah I mean a lot of the heart of this film is based on I have two younger sisters and I'm really close with um... them and, you know, yeah, you get very protective of your sisters and, you know, anyone they're with. And and so it kind of started there. And obviously being a woman and having a lot of different relationships. And I do have a lot of female friends and I tend to really love women like, you know, and some girls are not that way, but I I am. And I and so, you know, I just think the dynamics between women is always very interesting. And, you know, there's always like that pull between like the, I'm the old best friend. I know her better, but I'm the new best friend and I know her now. Yeah. And. I think that that's really interesting and we all have relationships like that. And, and so it was fun to dive into that. And then at the core of it, realize that all these people, including the Liz and Carmen characters seem to hate each other, actually really love each other and respect each other. And, you know, there's a moment in the film that's not giving too much away that Liz is fighting for Carmen more than anybody else. And, and that's like an actual true underlying thing where, you know, maybe on the surface, you really butt heads, but deep down, there's like this deep, sisterly love and that was really important I think with this film and, and especially with June and Sadie I felt like you know they fight a lot but there is nothing in the world more important to either one of them than their sister which was I thought really beautiful and you know what it's like to have an actual sister you know yeah and I and think what, that uh, it's really important to show the flaws in the female characters as well because I think there's a oh yeah you know, it's it's interesting you i think you feel you know sometimes societal pressures are like well you can't make you know it's funny i i it reminds me of i i not to go off topic but i remember one one time i was developing a an animated thing for a very big company and one of the notes was you if you have a female character they always have to be the smartest one like you can't ever make the girl dumb you know, and I think like, well, that's very unrealistic because being male or female, there is a wide variety of intellect, personality types, you know, kindness, meanness. And and so I think we wanted to show those cracks in friendship and in family with these girls. And, and even though you were rooting for them against these horrible guys, in contrast, it's kind of interesting because the guys, other than maybe their relationship with Puppy, was quite like healthy. You know, they seem very like well adjusted with each other. They like each other. They joke with each they other. They love to kill together. It's you know, yeah. so but I but I think that you know sometimes for the ultra politically correct, that's a tough thing to swallow. It's like, well, these girls shouldn't be, but no, but that's real life. And I think even in a movie like this, that you know, if you just leave read the log line, it feels very like, oh, I've seen this before. But for us, the where we can differentiate ourselves with other films is that we do dive into the character development more so than I think your standard, you know, hillbilly whore, as you put it, you know, by showing that there's some depth to these people and their their relationships are are complicated. At the heart, like you said, they love each other, they support each other, but it ain't always that simple in life, as we all know. Yeah. With family, you know. Yeah, I think too, like as, as it starts to unravel and some of the choices, people are like, oh, they made such stupid choices. And it's like, well, yeah, but if you're thrown into a real situation like that, maybe those are the choices that the, these particular characters based on their personalities would make. 
you know, and, and even like June, not, not seeing the red flags. It's like, well, we all know those people, male or female. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We all have those friends that you're like, oh my God, why are you back with this person? What is wrong with you? And, and she just doesn't want to hear it. She just wants it to be the way it is in her head, but that's not reality. So I thought that was really a cool character trait in her. Well, and like these women are messy and I mean, I'm messy and I'm just seeing like messy women on screen is the best where it's again, like we're not just one kind of monolithic thing, but like we're just as complicated as any other male character and have our own weird thing. So I love seeing that in movies like this, where again, like, you know, it's really easy to just stay in stereotypes and tropes, but you go deeper into those tropes and make them not tropes, if that makes any sense. Um. Yeah, 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 thanks, because I mean, we definitely take, we try to to take care with the characters and put a couple extra layers and yeah, and try to be, you know, in a setting that's so fantastical as this to make it feel realistic that, yeah, it yeah. Wouldn't, it's not a, a, yeah, it's not a, um, a simple sisterhood of let's band together and you know kick the because you know i want you we want you to like the guys too we want you to you know and i think that's part of what we try to show is the charm of these guys and maybe why june would be you know uh trick you know be attracted to to dylan uh, dylan david is yeah. the character dylan's the actor um and just <laughs> be like you know oh it's kind of makes sense like yeah the exterior they're these you know sort of you know gruff uh hunting type dudes but they're not idiots yeah. And they're charming and they're they're smart and they have a different point of view that I think would be, um, you know, exciting for someone who's maybe used to metrosexual, you know, uh, sensitive male types like this is a refreshing twist. And I think that's why someone like June would be like, I like this, you know. Um, yeah, because life is complicated, you know. Yeah. Well, and I also love that, again, like I say hillbilly horror, but you make these characters smart. You're not like it's the stupid hillbilly characters that come in and like, the, and again, the stereotypes. And I watched this, no idea what was going to happen. I was like, oh, they're all going to come together and fight together. Right. And there's an incredible twist, which we won't spoil. Um, <laughs> but I did, again, like playing with these tropes in a really interesting way and not to spoil the twist, but was that always something in your mind with this? Like, where did that twist come from in the process of writing the script? That was sort of stage two. You know, we had this okay. great story about these friends and, and we knew that we wanted to put them in a setting that felt threatening and we knew we wanted some big threat. And we so we had sort of this great skeletal story, but then it was like, man, we should really turn this on its head, you know? So it isn't just, oh, we've seen this before, you know? And so that's where we were like, kind of took a big swing and I remember saying, like, is this really dumb or is this really yeah. cool? You know, we and we kind of weren't sure. We we're like, well, let's hope it's cool. You I know? mean, I always think films like that are cool, those particular films. But yeah, I mean, it could have been people like, what? But it was, the cool thing I think about this is that we didn't know if it was going to be that much of a surprise to the audience or if they would figure it out. And unanimously everybody's like I did not see that coming and and that's been really exciting to people so that's been super exciting to us because we're like I don't know if people figure it out it's still cool but it, it seems like everyone's just shocked by the twist and so that's been really I think really exciting yeah to for us. sure yeah that was a nice uh, bonus yeah I mean I did yell and cheer in my office when it happened <laughs> so thank that's you for that <laughs> <laughs> but I want to go back um Chrissy with you about working with Scout Taylor Compton as your sister and like what that relationship I know that you've worked with her you guys worked with her before Algoria but now you're like your sisters and so what was that working with her to kind of create that relationship between the two of you it was really great because Scout and I are legitimately good friends and you know I go over to her house and spend hours looking at bridesmaid dresses with her online like we're those that were actual friends and I could never imagine being in a, an argument with Scout. Like she's just, neither one of us are that personality and she's so happy and upbeat and like positive. And, and so the fact that the whole movie we're fighting and the first two scenes we shot together, were just fully at each other's throat was, it was like a weird dynamic. It was like a weird alternate version of like our friendship if it was like a totally different thing. And mm -hmm. so it was really easy to keep that underlying love because we genuinely love each other. But it was also really fun. And, and I think Scout obviously is an amazing actress and she she gives me a lot. And I think that 
the way I approach the scenes, you know, was a different thing for her. And so I think we really worked off each other super well. And we had this, this cool chemistry that until we actually got on set, we weren't really sure what it was going to be. But the second we got into that first argument and Spider actually threw her like a line in it um, that that wasn't in the script and didn't tell me. And so she like threw it out to me at the end of the scene and and I like responded very naturally um, because I was so worked up and like teary and and I was just I think that I ended up saying fuck you June. <laughs> I slammed the door and yeah, it was, it was the, a very authentic it, it was thing. that moment because I wanted to you know because we we had built in all these arguments and I'm like why are they arguing so much you know and I and I just sort of on the spot came up with this idea that their mom like left you know um and and left them just with with their dad which i think is also another sort of unexpected usually it's the dad leaves and you know so yeah again adding to this complicated nature of female life you know and so i was like scout at the end of the argument just say no man you know it's no what no wonder mom left you know yeah. and then like as if blaming you know yeah. sadie for the mom leaving and so it really was like kind yeah. of a shocker when she yeah i think it really became like this full circle thing when i you know, I have a part later on in the film, not to ruin anything, where, you know, I, I talk about how I didn't get to be, like, a fun person or my real self because of it. And I had to step up and basically be her mom and take care of everything. And it was it was really hard for me. And it kind of was the reason why my character is the way she is. And and um, and at that point, I was so deliriously tired, too, and emotional and laying in the desert dirt with spiders around us with scouts. I was just, like, crying and... <laughs> And it was all coming out and, you know, it, it, Scout's a very supportive acting partner. So it, I absolutely loved it. And I hope that I get to, I want a sequel and I hope I get to play her sister in a lot of the movies. <laughs> the Bury the Bride cinematic universe, we're manifesting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we wrap up, what, do you have any projects that the two of you can tease at all on what you're working on? Anything? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, we're shooting a new movie in June. So we have one more month of prep. And this is a very different movie than Bury the Bride. Um, it's a very personal kind of thing. Um, it's called Little Bites. And it's essentially, it's a horror film about a, a widow who has a 10-year-old daughter who also has inexplicably a monster living in a dark room in her house that she is allowing to slowly eat her alive. Um, and it really is a metaphor for parenthood and this idea that the more you try to protect your children from the world and the horrors of the world, the more it slowly destroys yourself. And so it's a very like, you know, thoughtful. Very uh, dark and. Yeah, but movie. very strange. And I'm so excited to shoot this. It's so different. It's a yeah. 180 from the, the sort of manic, handheld, shaky cam of Bury the Bride. And this is going to be a much more measured thing and it and sort of a heavy subject, you know, so. And the cast is really cool. We can't say who we have, but we're really excited for every character is really exciting. We're just so excited to work with some of the people and some friends and yeah it's gonna be great yeah so oh, that's look exciting. Up, probably by this time next year we'll be doing another interview about yeah that. hopefully yeah hell yeah fingers crossed very excited well spider and chrissy thank you so much for speaking to me with speaking with me today about bury the bride and everyone bury the bride is streaming on tubi please it's, go watch it it's worth it i promise Yay. awesome thank you guys thanks, thanks.